Dungeons & Dragons Beyond released a set of statistics for 5th edition characters, races, and classes, ranking them from the most played to the least played. So let's take a look and let's see if my most played combo, Human Fighter, is on there. <sighs> yep, yep, it's the most played. Seriously, people? Look at you guys, running around with your, your stupid little swords on your back and blue shirts. Unlike you guys, I was doing it before it was cool. I mean, it was it was cool when I was doing it, and then and then you guys started doing it, and now it's not anymore. I'm I'm the only cool person here. What's funny is that I play fighters a lot, and I've had several characters I play as other classes revert back to being that class. I made a second level barbarian with one level fighter. I literally only use the first level fighter abilities. I never raged. Anyway, following up Human Fighter, you've got Elf Ranger, Elf Wizard, Human Wizard as the second, third, and fourth places for popularity. Looking at the bottom of the list, the least played classes are Bard, Sorcerer, and Druid. And the least played races are Goliath, Aarakocra, and Osimar. This is funny to me. We do have an Osimar Druid in our game now, so that must mean that this list is off and it should be updated because that's, that's how statistics works, I think. As far as races, I noticed that a lot of the first games that I played had weird races and elves. A lot of elves come to think of it. I believe it's because elves in popular culture are just like humans, only good at everything. They are elegant, strong, wise, intelligent, graceful, beautiful, and have super hearing, and are a crack shot with a bow. They basically have all the upsides of being elderly and all the upsides of being young with none of the downsides. Kind of like the blade equivalent of vampires. Of course, they're nothing like this in D&D, I mean, statistically speaking. If they were, you'd need to make the character with a Mutants and Masterminds superhero rulebook and not a Dungeons & Dragons one. Actually, the most recent games, I've seen a lot of humans being played, like five humans and maybe one dwarf or elf. I think the reason is because humans get either plus ones to all stats or an extra feat, so they start with a lot of versatility that the other races don't get, and that gives them a pretty decent advantage. I used to play as a human called Professor Solomon in my old group, who's basically, I tried to make him like Gandalf. An old man, walking stick, white hair, white beard, could summon a portal to the nether realms which would drag his enemies into the nightmarish hellscape. Okay, that last one, we didn't see Gandalf do in The Lord of the Rings, but we didn't see him not do it either. So I'm still technically correct. What was interesting was I used to play him as the old man of the group who was taking care of the youngsters until I realized that I was actually the youngest person in the group. It's hard to be the oldest human in your 70s when elves and dwarves live hundreds of years. Personally, I divide the classes into three tiers. Tier 1, I love this class. Tier 2 is, this is a class I like a lot. And Tier 3, eh, I'll get around to playing it eventually. Fighters, Paladins, Clerics, and Wizards are Tier 1. Bards, Monks, Druids, Rangers, and Barbarians are Tier 2. And Rogues, Sorcerers, and Warlocks are Tier 3. Note, I don't dislike any of the classes, but some I definitely prefer over the other ones. Why are these three always overlooked? I think the rogue's sneak attack is kind of boring, and I prefer playing as a wizard over sorcerers and warlocks, particularly because the warlock's abilities are more cantrip-focused, and several invocations are used for deception, disguises, and social manipulation. While the sorcerer's meta magic and sorcery points never really interested me, but who knows, I've never played one, I could have a change of heart. Races are weird for me. I usually play a human. I never like being one of those guys who you've been playing with for years and you keep forgetting what race they are. So if I want to be normal, I just play a human. But if I want a different voice or something, I play someone else. I usually only play a new race if that race matches the personality I'm interested in. Like if I want to be dark and mysterious, I play as a tiefling. If I want to be gruff and coarse, then I play as a goliath and so on. I played a halfling wizard once named Kevin who was upbeat and peppy, and that was a lot of fun. Then I played as a gruff minotaur sentinel who used to talk like, Minron thinks we should climb that mountain. Minron got hurt real bad trying to climb that wall, which is a really good way to get the players to remember your name. I'm surprised they haven't come out with a lot more official races and classes. There's a few extra ones in Sword Coast Guide and Volvo's Guide. But it's not like in 4th edition where there was this giant deluge of classes and races with Player's Handbook 1, Player's Handbook 2, Player's Handbook 3, which some people hated, some people loved. The next thing we have to look forward to for 5th edition is Xanathar's Guide to Everything, which is coming out November 21st, which calls itself the first major expansion for 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons. I'm looking forward to that, which should add plenty of more options. Thanks for watching. 
I'll see you guys next time.